Yo, what's good guys? In this video, I'll be going over some of the most useful commands that I use in Rust, along with a few links included in the description for some more in-depth look at the other options you have with keybinds and console commands. So check the description for everything that I talk about in the video. And also I've got some links in the description as well for you to read more if you don't know how to find information on this. So first of all, what I'm doing right now is the debug camera. So it is just uh, debug dot debug camera. And you can see when you start typing in the console, it gives you a list of everything that you do. So what I have done here is I have bind M debug debug camera. And that allows me to press M when I'm on a server that I'm admin on so I can switch into third person to take screenshots for YouTube and things like that and shoot cinematics. There is a whole wiki on all the commands associated with Rust cinematics. I will include a link to that in the description below if you want to read more about it. And then there's also no clip, which I bind to my N before we move on. So I just do bind N no clip, and that's all it is. And then if you type write CFG, that will save your settings that you type in there so that every time you open Rust, it's the exact same settings that you've already done. So let's start from the top of the list. If you're trying to connect to a server that you found outside the game or a person has sent it to you and it's not loading, you just type client.connect space and then the IP address with the port. And then we have fps.limit and you can set your FPS limit like this. So I set mine to 60 or 144 or you could do 240 or 30. And then that will limit your FPS. If you set it to negative one, that is unlimited FPS. So you can see I have mine set to like 100 or something right now, or maybe 80 in the bottom left corner. And to see that in the bottom left corner, you type perf one, and you can go perf two, three, four, and I think up to five. And each of these has additional things that will show up in the bottom left corner of your screen. After that, we have the combat log. So you bind F2 console toggle combat log. And then when I press F2, it shows me the past uh, 30 events that have taken place. So if I were to shoot something or someone and I wanted to see that, I just press F2 and it will show me that. But it says combat log is empty right now. Next, we have bind C duck. And I'm not holding anything right now. It's just permanently bound. I'm not sure if this is like in the actual settings to toggle crouch nowadays, but that's how you do it. And then I press control to stand up. So I have C bound to permanently crouch. So I don't have to press and hold control. And that is just bind C duck. Next we have bind X attack duck. And what this will do is permanently attack when you push that key. So if I have an ax and I'm chopping down a bunch of trees, I just press X and then I'm not touching anything and it'll just keep going. This is also how people stay loaded in a server. They'll swing like a hammer, press this key bind. And to cancel it, you just left click. So this is how people stay on servers when they're AFK without getting booted. After that, we have bind Z forward sprint. So when I push Z, I'm automatically running without touching anything and then I can look around I can alt look around and then when I push W it stops we have graphics dot waves zero which turns the waves in the oceans off um, so the new waves are quite violent and to turn those off it's just waves.0 I've got mine turned off already so you can see it's just the normal water instead of the big huge waves we have strobe light dot force off true and this turns off strobe lights which can cause you to lag immensely so I need to use this one that we will write dot uh, write CFG to save we have input hold time point one. So what this will do is make it faster when you're interacting with things that you have to push E for. When we interact with it, it's way faster now. Compared to before, it would be like a lot longer for it to go away. So it's, you know what I mean? So it makes that faster. 
we have input auto crouch true so that just means when you step into something like this it'll you see how i duck down and then i stand up that just is doing it on its own it just automatically ducks down we have hit notify notification level two and what this does is make it to where if you get um projectile invalid it will not give you a hit marker i am not sure if this command is still working on the new update right now but it should be to where you'll only hear and see the notification when you hit somebody if you actually hit it and it will not notify you if it's a projectile invalid we've also got client look at radius 20 so what this will do is it'll make the radius of your look be bigger so like i'll be able to see this from further away you know what i mean so like it starts to show up here which is way further away than it normally is so you can close doors from further away see how far i can drag it out that's what this command is for next we have gc.buffer right here and you set this to 4096 and this will assist with your game uh, cleaning up temp files faster so it should help with your fps a little bit and then we've got this gc dot incremental underscore milliseconds and you set this to one which will also help with your fps a little bit and cleaning up temp files and then these three commands right here um i think just recently got turned off but if you ever see the news in the change log that they are turned back on you can always use them again in the future if they do bring them back on so the pre the player dot recoil comp is what resets your recoil like in some other games when you shoot and it'll go right back to where you originally shot from with the recoil. The physics.step60 makes you jump a little higher. I think they turn that off. And then the set and mit maps, we have another one that we can try that I found. So I think one is default. Let's see how far away we can go before that wind turbine disappears about right here. If we're over here and we set it to point you see it dis disappears at 0.25 i'm not sure what disappears with that i think it's just deployables so this could potentially help with your fps by not loading in deployables if they're like far away so be careful with this one and i, I think one is default to set it back that's what it appears to be so like you see it's not loaded in right here we put it back to one then it loads back in. I'm going to leave mine on 0.25 and just play around with it and see if it helps with my FPS. And the set and mit map bias is the one that they turned off recently. So I'll also have uh, these links right here in the description below. We can go over them real quick just to see what they are. So we have the wiki.facepunch.com and it goes over some of the key binds that you can do. Like if you wanted to aim down your sights and then have your flashlight turn on, I have my flashlight bound to my mouse instead of F, but there is um, a bunch of information on here for assigning key binds, putting them back to normal and saving your key binds. You have to save your key binds for them to load every single time that you load. But you could also bind things like client.disconnect, crafting items. You can do some crazy shit. And then this website also has a bunch of just information in general on the game. And like I said earlier, the cinematic tools right here is where you will find more information and commands that you can use to create your own Rust cinematics for your YouTube or whatever purpose that you would like to do that for. This is where you can find some information on that. I have this link right here that I found, which goes into some detail for some things like what I was talking about with the auto crouch, auto run, auto swimming, and then bind light toggle to aim. This will bind the button to toggle your light or laser attachment to your aim button, meaning that when you aim down sights, your laser or flashlight will turn on. Extremely useful for nighttime PVP or for players who use laser sights quite often. For a laser sight attachment to work, it has to be on for you to get the benefits of that. And then this just goes over some more things that you can do. Um, this is more so for the simple person that just wants to throw some things in and then say you have to save it, remember, with the right CFG command. 
once you set a keybind, and then there's just some more other basic things that you can use like the FPS counter ping and things like that. So this is for the for the simple Rust player. If you want to go into a little more detail, you can go to this Corrosion Hour article, which will give you some more details on keybinds and what keybinds do and other parameters that you can use for keybinds. And then I also have one more from Corrosion Hour for a more simple overview of some things that you can do with keybinds. Check out these links and my favorite console commands will all be in the description below thank you guys for watching subscribe for more content to come leave a like if you found this video useful send it to a friend who needs help with rust commands and i will catch you in the next one